clinch the victory. She'll remember that the rest of her life, and she's been tremendous. A transfer from Nichols. She's mainly going to be down in the zone. We should see a lot of ground balls here, a lot of defensive opportunities for Houston. Uh, first pitch is over the inside corner for a strike and underway. Mike Burwell is the home plate umpire. Tracy Laycock is the first base ump. Terry Holt is at third. Henry has been outstanding all weekend. Hitting 429 for the season. We've seen the speed and the power. Bounce to the right side. A base hit to start the first inning for Caden Henry. We were just talking about how important it is to keep the ball down, to keep the ball in the ballpark. A really good job by Caden Henry. This is probably the most easy ball we've seen her hit all weekend. And she makes herself, just kind of rolls her wrist over, gets herself on first base where she becomes a very dangerous base runner. Mia Scott at the plate. She's been very dangerous, also playing some really good third base here. There's an opportunity here possibly to lay down a bunt or possibly a hit and run opportunity for the Longhorns. In the dirt, Henry down to second. Steal for Henry. Really a, a good job by Taria Coleman in order to keep the ball in front. Otherwise, we might see Henry standing on third base. Hitters count for Mia Scott. Now, Mia Scott, one for five this weekend. Now, two walks drawn, takes inside. I think the first inning is crucial. Uh, Paris Lehman kept Texas off the scoreboard on Friday. The offense got her four runs. A uh, difference yesterday as Texas scored five runs in the first. So the first inning has been crucial for both teams this weekend. Yeah, I think Mia was taking all the way in, in, on that pitch. And Paris took a, just a little bit moment longer just to gather herself, get her breath, get her rhythm. It's a very exciting weekend for these young student athletes out here on this beautiful Sunday. Texas with 21 hits this weekend, 11 extra base hits, including six homers. And that just missed. Coleman kept it there for an extra second, called the ball, two on, nobody out for Katie Stewart. Yeah, Coleman was just trying to frame that and show that off just for a moment longer. They've got two runners on bases from first and second, and let's see what this young athlete can do here at the plate. Now Katie Stewart missed the first two games, tending to a family obligation, and her teammates have picked her up. 19 runs for Texas without one of its best offensive players in the lineup. Here she bats against Lehman, missing, and the numbers are sensational for Stewart. She leads the team with 17 walks. She has four homers, five doubles. On base percentage at 562 for the true freshman. Yeah, and she hit a 300 foot blast over in Austin last weekend that even Coach White was surprised about. Hit the grad building, first student athlete to do that in Texas softball history, according to Coach Mike White. She takes a good off speed pitch there for a strike. It's one and one. Out of Lincoln Way East High School, Frankfurt, Illinois. Uh, played for Colorado Sparkler Future Stars game. As that pitch is at the top of the zone. I still think that was a really good take on her part. You know, she missed a couple of games. She's doing a good job here by giving herself a few times to kind of track the ball, get the rust off a little bit, free up her hands so she can drive something here. Paris has got the advantage, so we want to try to keep the ball down in the zone if possible. Bounced foul. Stewart in the top 10 of extra inning softballs 2023. Extra elite 100. Lehman battling here, two on, nobody out in the Texas first inning. And she chased that one, a big swing, and now a throw down to second, the tag is not in time. Crucial strike out there for Paris Lehman as she gets Stewart chasing. 
She does, and, and Stewart's got to protect a little bit here, and it was close enough to the black that she needed to go ahead and try to put the bat on the ball. Now, Paris Lehman did not have a strikeout on Friday to the last batter of the game. She ended with the strikeout. She gets her first strikeout in the first. Now it's Reese Atwood. Over the inside for a strike. Atwood this weekend, two for seven. One double, that's one hitter that Houston's kept in the yard. She entered the weekend with the team leading 10 homers. She's just missed a few. And the Kooks have tried to stay middle of zone away on Reese all weekend. Her really her sweet spot or her hot spot is middle plate in that she can drive. Her hits this weekend have all been to right field, right center field. Popped up behind first. Can't do hoping for a play. It's on the concourse. Bounces into the stands, another sellout crowd. Three straight sellouts here this weekend. And a one-two count now for Atwood. The wind is motionless. No wind right now. It's very, uh, very windy on Friday and yesterday. It's the best weather we've had all weekend this Sunday afternoon. And that goes Ooh. behind Atwood. It hit her in the foot. So a mistake there from Lehman. On one, two, she hits Reese Atwood. Now the bases are loaded. That's the second time Reese has been hit this weekend. One off the, her helmet, and this one looks like off the back of her front shoe. Maybe her, maybe her calf area looks like it came off of there, but she's shaking it off and headed down to first base. Now here's Jolie Mitchell. She's hit third all weekend. She moves to fifth with Katie Stewart back in the lineup. Very dangerous hitter batting here with the bases loaded. And a good breaking ball in there at the knees for a strike. That's probably the best changeup I've seen her throw all weekend. Mitchell's been outstanding, four for six, a homer, a double, two walks, three runs scored. And a critical spot here, one down, base is loaded. One ball, one strike. And as Mike White told us, not a prototypical swing, but very effective for the transfer from Notre Dame. Oh, that's tough to lay off of there. I know she wants to hit. He said that she's so aggressive at the plate that he expects her to be on base at least twice a game. We've seen that happen, and she hit that huge blast that, you know, landed. It would have landed, actually, over at the convenience store had the video board not been in its way. The 2-1. Just missed. And now it's a tough situation for Paris Lehman, a very dangerous batter with power. And she has to come in with the bases loaded on this 3-1 pitch. You know, as a hitter, you're looking for your very, very favorite pitch. It's 3-1. You know she's got to come to you with the bases loaded. She doesn't want to walk someone in for the first run here on Sunday. And she was right on it and fouled it back. Whew. That was a really good matchup. I'd probably just look in that very same spot if I was Jolie at the plate. Maybe Paris could put a little bit more spin on it, get a little bit of elevation to get her to pop it up. A single, a walk, and a hit batter. Base is loaded for Texas. Henry at third, Scott at second, Atwood at first base. The 3 2. Strike three over the inside. Mitchell thought it was ball four. Awesome pitch here by Paris. She floats it in almost like took just a little bit off of her screwball to get the strikeout. Here's Alyssa Washington, the captain. Three homers this week and already a new career high for homers in a season with six. Hits a third. Rollins steps on third, and Lehman escapes the bases. Performing is going to get the start, and we've seen that happen this weekend. They didn't have any extra base hits yesterday. Estelle Check is the only lefty on the Longhorn team. She has a devastating changeup, 
She does a lot of self-talk in the circle, kind of settling herself. There's a lot of young softball players that are in the stands here today at Houston. Really learn a lot from both of these pitchers, including Czech. Now Czech faced Houston on Friday. Pitch misses in, a big opportunity for her. She gets her third start of the season, her eighth appearance overall. She was in the game during that fateful fourth inning for Texas in which the defense really cost them, plus hit batters. Houston scored eight, Lair Boutte takes strike one. But apart from that inning, she pitched quite well, allowing just two hits in three innings. She was charged with seven runs, but only two earned as Texas had an uncharacteristically sloppy inning. It's bounced to shortstop. Rihanna Martinez in time over to first for the first outs. And Lair just kind of chopped this ball into the dirt, trying to get some elevation of the ball to make herself safe. But Gutierrez is hanging out there, or excuse me, Martinez is hanging out there, makes that look very easy. Boutet retired, now it's Kennedy Thomas. Up the middle, backhand play, Alyssa Washington made that look very easy. Well, the captain could have a highlight reel of just her defensive plays this weekend, and that actually is not a bad idea for the Longhorn team to put that together for the captain over there, but she's looked great. Here is the Texas defense, familiar for most of the weekend. First start this weekend for Katie Stewart, the first baseman, Washington, Martinez, and Scott, first to third in the infield as Rollin takes ball one. She was the star on Friday for Houston. Two homers, five batted in. Well, the one thing that we learned on Friday about Czech is she really, with these left-handers, she's going to stay on that inner half of the plate. That inning that you talked about where there were the eight runs in the fourth, also there were two hit by pitch, along with those two errors made defensively, which completely changed the game for Houston. One ball, one strike on Jasmine Rollin. And she fouls it off. Estelle Czech started her first two games of the season. That was against San Diego. And Houston Christian has since relief appearances, including Friday night when she went three innings against Houston. Gets the start today. Another ground ball, backhand play. Katie Stewart back to the bag. Three ground ball outs in the first here for Estelle Check. And I think that's what we're probably going to see for her. Ovation than what we see from some of these D1 athletes in the circle. Here's Viviana Martinez to begin the Texas second inning. Martinez, Maloney and Dayton do up. Martinez one for seven with a walk this weekend. She's played some great defense out at, at shortstop. Really huge range. She really hadn't made a lot of contact at the plate, but some of the best shortstops, they're really known more for the leather uh, rather than the bat. But even with that, she's still hitting over 300. We've seen Houston attack her on the inside. There's been some called strikes on the inside that she has thought we're in or maybe just fooled by. We'll see where Lehman goes here with this 1-1. Good off-speed pitch. Martinez could not hold up. It's 1-2. and two. Really, really great pitch. That fooled me, too, when Paris let it go. I thought it was going to be something up in the zone, so great down ball. Great down ball. One ball, two strikes. That time she laid off. Well, Paris needs to be a little bit careful with that because she kind of showed us a little bit that she was taking something off of that, the way that she landed on her front side. Originally recruited by Mike White to Oregon when he got the job at Texas, changed her commitment to the 40 acres. The 2-2. Bounced off the screen in front of the Houston dugout. Cougars have the white uniforms on today. Texas with the burnt orange pinstriped uniforms. Good yeah, memories been, from your Nebraska yeah, days. I always really, really love pinstripe uniforms. I loved them when we played at Nebraska. Probably would have liked to play in those all the time, but they really do look outstanding. Very professional looking uniform to me. Extra reflection off the Houston unis today with the bright, sunshiny day here in Houston. It is beautiful. Really no wind. Maybe just a few clouds in the sky. 
63 degrees here at Cougar Softball Stadium. A full count, another deep count for a Texas hitter against Paris Lehman. Popped up right around the circle. Who wants it? It's Bree Cantu taking charge, calling off Jasmine Rollett. And if you saw there, Matt, when the ball was hit, it almost was going to land right in the circle. It's the job of the corners to make that play to get Paris out of it so that they can actually feel the ball. Cantu facing her former team. No shades needed at first base. Now she jogs in as Ashton Maloney steps in from the left side. Showing bunt. Pitch missed a bit high. Maloney two for seven this weekend. Yeah, and she's a straight slapper. She's going to slap or bunt in every one of her at bats. That's what her forte is, and that's what keeps her in the lineup is that along with her speed. Good bunt. Picked up by Rollins. She throws to first. A great play from the Houston third baseman, Jasmine Rollin. I wish we could see how much ground Jasmine Rollin covered in order to make this play. And if more third basemen can be that aggressive, really is an impressive play because we know Maloney's got wheels. She plays aggressively. She takes charge. She had a play opening weekend. Katie Ray Brown on the air with me said, I'd never seen a play made ever like that in softball. She fielded it and tagged the runner out on the way to first. The third baseman tagging out a fast base runner after a bunt attempt. Well, she may have been able to do that had Paris not been in her way, but you know, she's got really, really great instincts at the plate, at third, and with base running. She's really the full package when it comes to an elite softball player. Bella Dayton takes just outside for a ball. She's walked three times. One for four at the plate has scored three runs. Now Bella Dayton hit ninth on Friday, moved up to eighth. Yesterday back at the nine hole today. Top of the order, Caden Henry on deck. Hopped up behind shortstop. Esmin shading her eyes from the sun makes the catch. A nice bounce back inning for Paris Lehman. Really, really look good. Impressive first inning shave from Estelle Check. Three ground ball out she induced, and she starts Cantu with a strike. Yeah, and, and they know one another as well. You know, not only were they former teammates, but, you know, Bree said this is not personal. She's just out here to get a win for the Cougars. Our pitch is just a bit low. They've, they've been throwing Bree consistently all weekend. They've kept the ball middle of the plate out away from her hands. And that's what we just saw from Check as well. Really just staying away from her in every one of her at bats. So Bree needs to make that adjustment where she looks that way and drives the ball oppo. Just missed Estelle Check began her career at NC State. Moved to Texas for the 22 season. Over 100 innings that 22 season when Texas reached the champ series at the College World Series against Oklahoma. Downstairs for a ball, three and two. Last season, 87 innings. A variety of roles, 13 starts, five complete games. Getting the start this Sunday afternoon as she tries to lift Texas to a series win. Line drive foul by Cantu. And I think that's where Bree needs to look. They've just not really given her anything middle in on the plate. She needs to look away and find something that she can drive. She has the ability to hit, you know, to right field with plenty of power, just like she does to left field. But I would, I would go ahead and look that way and see if she can drive something. She drives it to right, hit well. And it bounces off the base of the wall. Cantu digging for second. The throw is a bit late. On 3-2, an opposite field double for Brie Cantu. And she made that adjustment within the at-bat and gets to celebrate out there on second base in front of her hometown crowd in League City. But she gets all of this pitch. It crept down there along the warning track, and Maloney did a good job getting it back in. Brie likes to get her little dance on with her double. 
First hit of the weekend for Bree Cantu, one for five. She's been on base a lot with three walks. Here's Taria Coleman. She shows bunt, takes a strike. Coleman, a home run in the 12-10 win on Friday. That was a first inning line drive. Shows bunt again, offered at it late, it's 0-2. Well, when you're thinking about bunting and your coach Vesley gives her the bunt call to try to move people around, you really have to commit your mind to do it. I mean, Coleman is a great hitter, just stand-in hitter. And when you get the bunt call, you've got to really commit your mind to laying it down. Up the middle and through a base hit. Cantu is held up. They don't want to challenge Caden Henry's arm with nobody out here in the second inning. Right, and that's a really good adjustment, an 0-2 pitch. Check got it a little bit too close for Taria, Taria to handle, but she was able to drive the ball back up the middle. First and third situation now with two ducks uh, on the pond here for the Cougars. Excellent adjustment for Coleman. Shelby Smith coming up. She had two hits yesterday. Two of Houston's four hits. Coleman has good speed at first. Can't two below average speed at third. An interesting matchup as Texas beat Seton Hall 8-0 last year in a regional. Shelby Smith was the starting pitcher for Seton Hall. Mac Morgan started for Texas, but Estelle Check closed out that game. Same matchup here with Check facing Shelby Smith. Well, Shelby needs to find something that she can drive something deep into the ballpark or find some grass, something really, really sharply hit on the ground. That pitch is up. Smith was 0 for 2 in that game as Texas threw a combined no hitter in the 8 nothing run rule victory. That's a called strike. Ooh, that was a really close pitch. I was right over the black part of the plate. The check is normally right around the strike zone. Only two walks issued in 17 in the third innings. Really, really good pitch, good location. She works with a great tempo. She does, and you know, she has a little bit different way. She takes the ball out of her glove. I don't know if you guys can see this, but she kind of pulls it out of her glove a little early in her windup as she goes to the plate. And Smith draws a walk. You can see the reaction from Czech as she cannot believe she walked Smith on five pitches. A double, a single, and a walk. And now a visit from Patty Ruth Taylor, first year pitching coach for Texas. We talked to Mike White about momentum and changing of momentum. And he said that they were going to plan on utilizing, you know, tucks in the circle, discussions to try to change momentum. And it's as important for them to do that now to slow down the game for the Longhorns as any time. And they've been chatting for a while. Umpire's going to go out and try to break it up to get the game resumed. But most of this conversation you see out there is with Patty Ruth and the captain just chatting about this situation. They're going to play in to protect that run. Patty Ruth played at Middle Tennessee. Was a volunteer assistant at UConn for two years. Last two seasons running the pitching at Lehigh. And that's when Mike White discovered her. In and here's Janiah Thomas at the plate with the bases loaded. Swing and first pitch, hits a line drive out to Dayton. She catches it. There's a tag up and scores Bree Cantu. Janiah did not wait around. First pitch swinging out to left field. Yeah, she hits the ball hard. Really, really great play. And Bree's got her wheels on and gets the score. The Cougs go up by one. Here's Mandy Esman. She's hit by the pitch. No, she's being asked to stay back. So emphatic umpiring here from Mike Burwell. As now Christian Vesley's gonna come down. 
as this was a bit of controversy on Friday. Janiya Thomas was hit by a pitch and Mike White came out to challenge it. And then right after that, Esman was hit by a pitch kind of on her front side, just below her knee in that same inning by a Stelchek in the bottom of the fourth in game one. Now Mike Burwell immediately asked Esman to come back. Let's see any movement here from Esman. Yeah, it almost looked like she tried to let it hit her. I mean, there, there's some little nuances about this game where you just try to make yourself safe. Bounce to shortstop to second for one. The relay in time, a double play. One pitch after a potential hit by pitch. The 6-4-3 ends the inning. And this is a pitcher's favorite play and then getting the double play and the Longhorns out of that inning. Caden Henry steps in for the second time. The Longhorns lead off batter against Paris Lehman. First pitch taken for a ball. She bounced one through the right side for a hit. Her first time up was stranded at third base. And maybe the most softly ball that we've seen her hit all weekend because she's just been on fire at the plate. Houston grabs the lead in the bottom of the second on a sacrifice fly from Janiah Thomas. Lehman labored through that first inning. Stranding the bases loaded, getting Alyssa Washington to bounce out to third base. She came back with a 1-2-3 second inning, coaxing two pop-ups and getting great defense from Jasmine Rollin on a bunt attempt from Ashton Maloney. And that hits the knees for a strike at two and one. Yeah, very good pitch there on the inner half of the plate. And maybe Henry's looking something more middle out so that she can drive maybe the other way out toward left field. And she takes another close pitch, called the ball three and one. And if we've seen her this weekend, if we've really paid attention to how she approaches her at bats, this 3-1 count, she's going to be looking for something just middle and just out that she can drive. She's really just been dialed in at the plate all weekend. Popped up behind third. Tough play. Diving is Esmond. It's a fair ball. Henry into second. Esmin covered so much ground, nearly a spectacular catch from the Houston shortstop. Yeah, and this is a C and I ball, C, excuse me, C and ball double actually. Really good effort by Esmin almost making that play. It's really a spot where there's not anybody that's going to cover it very well over there. Esmin shaking that off, hit pretty hard whenever she went to reach for that ground or that uh, pop up. You really could see the speed of Esmond covering that ground. They even make it a close play at third. Houston considered challenging that, but they will play on with Mia Scott at the plate. Scott walked her first time. She drills this into right field to base hit. The throw goes to second. Texas has tied it up. Scott on the first pitch drives in Caden Henry. Yeah, and she was a lot more aggressive in this at bat than we've seen her. Really pushes the ball through the 3 4 hole and scores Henry and it was able to advance because of the small bobble there out in right field. Yeah, bobble from Amanda Carden. Almost felt like Coach Mike White let Car Henry decide on her own. There wasn't an emphatic stop sign or a wave in to score. She, he let the base runner decide. Yeah, she read the play. And that's what you do with a lot of your really good base runners. That's an instinctual thing. That's just kind of relaxing and seeing the game and letting yourself react to the game. An error charge to Carden for the bobble in right field on that single. Makes it an unearned run. Here's Katie Stewart. She struck out chasing a good breaking ball away her first time. This one is popped up. Can't two dives and it's foul near the Houston dugout. Yeah, and she makes a good effort here to try to get that out. 
and get themselves back into their dugout. She almost landed on the front porch there of the dugout as well. Brie Cantu having a good time over there at first base. Runner goes, here's the throw down from Coleman. Close play, but safe. Now Coleman seemed like she's using the dirt by design. As that was taken by Espen, quick tag applied. And Esman looked like she was a little bit late to the bag for that coverage. And part of that is the pressure having Stewart at the plate. She's got to kind of cover her position over there at shortstop. Maybe just got to the bag a little bit too late. A great throw by Coleman. That was the fourth steal in four tries this season for Mia Scott. Stewart takes in the dirt. Great description from Mike White of Katie Stewart. He said, she's one of those kids that looks impressive, but kind of a squeaky voice, kind of surprisingly squeaky. Yeah, I thought, well, you know, that's one of the interesting things he can bring up. He really can't criticize her hitting too much. So it was really kind of a funny comment that she said uh, that by uh, a young, young lady. She went after that one, similar to the strikeout in the first inning. That was ball four. She, she offered at it. Something to be said about Paris, too. I mean, she's changing speeds. They're going to chat a little bit here with Mike White and Coach Singh. Yeah, Steven Singleton in his fifth year. Very candid conversation here with Singleton, White, and their star freshman, Katie Stewart. Well, both coaches are smiling at her trying to get her to relax a little bit. I think she's maybe pressing because this is the first time we've seen her this weekend. A lot of times for, and he just kind of gave her a little hit on the shoulder too to give her some confidence at the plate. The last thing you want to do is have a, a young athlete that's having such a great year thus far, feeling like she needs to press today. Shelby Smith getting loose down in the Houston bullpen. She worked six and two-thirds innings yesterday behind the starter, Tamaya Waiters. Popped up into right field. Here comes Amanda Cardin in foul ground. She makes the catch. Scott tags. The throw not in time. Stewart 0 for 2. And Scott makes it to third with one out. And that's as, just as good as playing small ball, advancing the runner to third. Mia Squat, Scott showing off some of her wheels getting over there pretty easily. There's Reese Atwood. Looked like she was hit on the calf on a pitch that was obviously thrown behind her if it hits you in the calf. Good swing, fouled it back. You know, she just hasn't quite had great contact yet this weekend. And that was a tremendous, I mean, really, really like textbook type swing that she just put on that ball just barrel head dropped a little bit and got under it the family owns a safari south of houston towards the coast she hosted some teammates there last thanksgiving from sandia texas great job by coleman there saving the run keeping the ball down in front of her right out in front of the plate Entered the weekend, top four in the country in homers, RBI, and slugging. RBI chance here, 1-1 one, one game in the third. Pop foul back towards us. And off the glass of the press box. Yeah, and I think she just got her off balance a little bit there. Paris was able to take a little bit off of that pitch. Similar location that she threw her in the previous pitch, but just took a little bit off and had her out on her front side just a little. One ball, two strikes. Jolie Mitchell on deck. Mia Scott at third. Tap towards Lehman. She looks to third, throws to first. She's coming home. Here's the throw. Not in time. Aggressive base running. Mia Scott beats the throw in Texas as a 2-1 lead. That's one of those difficult plays. I mean, Paris has done what you're taught to do. You look the runner back, she kind of glanced the runner back, allowed Mia to be safe. 
what you could try to do is go ahead and look her back, look like you're gonna throw to first, and then sling it back over to Rollin and get her in a box. Yeah, I think the look needed to be longer with the speed of Atwood. I think you need to look a little longer, hold her, and then throw. Right, I agree with you. You called it a glance. That's probably a, an appropriate term for the look of Paris Lehman. But really perfect base running got time for Mia Scott. She yeah. earned that run. She certainly did, actually, from the time that the ball left her bat. She's been in the base path rolling, ready to come home. RBI hit, a steal of second, and a run scored. Uh, Jolie Mitchell struck out looking on a pitch on the inside corner her first time. She moved out of the way, maybe surprised, maybe just trying to sell the call, or maybe she truly thought it was going to hit her. But back-to-back -back strikeouts in that first inning. Now Stewart and Mitchell with the hit batter of Atwood in between. You know, I think Paris is trying to be a little bit too fine here. She needs to go back and do what she was kind of doing when she was settled in the previous half inning. Those change-ups, you can't, you've got to really kind of free yourself up and let it go. If you try to be too fine, you tend to throw the ball a little short to the plate. High and deep down the left field line, a foul ball. Easily home run distance, but just a little bit in front from Jolie Mitchell. This reminded me of the hit that she had on Friday night that took out the, the uh, video board, but that ball is actually over in the convenience store parking lot across Scott Street. And the, if you look at the U of H logo, that lower part there on the left side of the H was compliments of Jolie Mitchell. Two balls, two strikes. Fouled off this one towards the right field bullpen. That's just hitting skill. I mean, she just powered one over to left field and then protected herself and just kind of spit that one off to right field to try to keep herself alive. Now that cleared the second fence. That leads onto the street out there. Huge power from Jolie Mitchell. Trying to extend this third inning for Texas. In the dirt, the count is full. Again, I, you know, Matt, that's her being a little bit too fine with that change up. It, it, it ends up being at the plate a little bit short and making Coleman work back there. You do want it to fall down to the, to the ground. That's where you kind of want it to land. You want to be down in the zone with that change, but you've got to get it across the plate. It's a right center. Back and off the top of the wall. Carden fires to second. Here's the tag. She's out. What a great throw, Amanda Carden, to gun down Jolie Mitchell. Sense for her. Had a great career at Texas at 337. 40 doubles, 32 homers. As we talked about on Friday, four years of softball, then played a season with the Texas women's basketball team after her softball career was over. Bunt attempt there from Cardin, and fouled off. A plays for Athletes Unlimited, so two current pros on the staff and Hope Troutwine and Adia Taylor. And Cardin, great throw to second, had a chance to ask Tori Vidalis, former All-American at Texas A&M, and played with Nadia Taylor the last few years. Cardin chased that one, a strike out there for Estelle Check. And Estelle really needed that to build some confidence and get some rhythm out for herself in the circle. But, you know, there was a chance here for Carden to really sneaky bunt early. She got behind in the count and really had to protect herself. And Check made a great pitch there over the outer half. Check had the double play ground out from Mandy Esmond and the second inning. Now she starts Boutte with the strike. Boutte grounded out to shortstop. Boutte pops it, foul behind third. Tori Vidalis told us about Nadia Taylor. Described her as someone who lives the game, constantly surrounding herself with softball. Loves to talk about mechanics and how she can 
tweak things at the plates. Very competitive mindset for Nadia Taylor, the Houston hitting coach and former Texas Longhorn. One, two count here. Drilled to left center. Way back and gone on a one, two pitch. Lair Boutte to the opposite field. And that ties it at two. Yeah, she got that pitch elevated a little bit, something that she could handle. And even with kind of being in protection with two strikes, she drills that ball to left center field for her second home run this weekend. And she absolutely gets a shot at it. And kind of in protect mode, that tells you how strong she is in a little bit of protection to go ahead and make that ball out of the ballpark and gets to touch them all. A homer on Friday to lead off the first inning. Another homer here, five on the season for Lair Boutte. And now Kennedy Thomas. Up the middle, a base hit. On the first pitch, Thomas singles to center. Yeah, third pitch for Lair, first pitch for Kennedy. Changing that momentum, changing the rhythm, trying to get something go on the scoreboard for their staff. Mike White out of the dugout activity. Down in the bullpen. And we will see Mac Morgan for the first time this weekend. She led Texas in innings pitched last year. Has faced some adversity this year. In a reduced role, but a chance to come on in a big spot here in the third inning of a Two extra base hits. And Jasmine Rollin, who had two home runs on Friday. Yeah, Jasmine was a little quiet yesterday in the box. I mean, defensively, she's obviously not quiet, but um, we'll see how she matches up with Mac Morgan. Rowland takes a strike. Morgan, the fifth pitcher seen by Houston hitters this weekend. Owen won the count. Outside for a ball. Tegan Kavon getting loose down in the bullpen. And Sophia Simpson. Back towards Morgan, she fields it, goes to second, did not look at, or goes to first, I should say. Good speed from Kennedy Thomas, so the sure out there for Mac Morgan, two down. Right, yeah, she, I mean, Kennedy Thomas is so quick, she was almost on second base by the time Mac Morgan fielded that ball cleanly and got the out. Here's Bree Cantu, a time called. Fouled off on the first pitch. Matt, they have consistently thrown her away. In her last at bat, she really kind of looked at, I think she just needs to go up there and look away and drive the ball that way. She drove it to the corner for a double her last time. That runs inside. First ball that they've thrown on the inner half and it was well off of the plate just to give her something different to look at. Morgan led Texas with 18 wins, 37 total appearances last season. Part of the All-Big 12 second team. All-Region. Seven complete games, five shutouts. And that misses in. Really, two pitches that she's seen, and I wouldn't be surprised if they go back away with her again. Morgan and Cantu were not teammates. Morgan's 2022 season at Arizona State. She came to the 40 acres for 23. That was Cantu's first season in Houston after two years with Texas. 3-0 the count for Bree Cantu. Yeah, we'll see if she, we'll see if she uh, picks out 
pitch out over the plate and is able to drive it. Watch out, people. Looks like a young athlete was able to snag that foul ball in the stands. Looks like everybody's okay over there. And that just missed. Cantu draws another walk. Yeah, I know Coach had talked about her working on the curve. I think that was probably her curve, her main pitch that she works on. And, and really what makes her successful is, is that heavy drop. Fourth walk drawn this weekend by Bree Cantu. Now a big spot here as Taria Coleman steps in. First pitch taken for a strike. Coleman unsuccessful trying to bunt. Got to a two strike count and then singled up the middle. This is back up the middle again, backing up on it. Martinez to second for the force out to end the inning. Incredible range there again with Martin. Rounded out her first time against Paris Lehman. Almost don't even expect her to ever hit a ground ball. She's hit so many lasers out of this ballpark all weekend. Starts her off with a, with a change up again, kind of coming up a little bit short on the plate with that change. Lehman has settled in. Left the bases loaded in the first. Allowed two runs in the third. And I think one of her keys is keeping Texas in the ballpark. Just one of their four hits for extra bases. This has popped up to shallow right, Lair Boutte. No shades required as she makes the catch. Yeah, she makes that look routine. And I was taking a look at Lair. We know when she transferred from Tennessee, she actually played some left field over there for her. There was a great highlight of her diving from left field toward that left center mark made a great play as a volunteer. Happy to have her on this Houston Cougar team, says Coach Vesley. Viviana Martinez takes off speed for a strike. Martinez popped up to third. And by Texas standards, we're seeing a lot of weak contact against Paris Lehman today. A lot of pop-ups, soft ground balls. And that's what Coach Vesley told us before the season. That's why she picked her in the transfer portal Saw her face 30 batters in the Florida Gulf Coast League and only one of the 30 by her estimation barreled up Paris Lehman. And Paris wanted to come here because of Hope Troutwine. She's like, I really want to work with this great pitcher. She still plays pro ball as well, just like Nadia. And really is allows these student athletes to just have somebody that they can be familiar with, somebody that actually can play the game along with them. That barely missed. She pulled a string on that one. That's probably the most elevated changeup that we've seen. And sometimes when they hang it, you really just have to stay back and bang it. That's one of those that you can hit out to left field and drive if you can keep yourself back. Two and one the count. Up the middle, a base hit there for Viviana Martinez. And it gets away. She's going to try for a second. A mistake there on the throw from Kennedy Thomas. It short hopped Esman, kicked towards third base into no man's land. And that's a mistake from the Cougars. Really aggressive base running here. And this ball was hit so hard, it was dangerous traveling back up the box like it was. And then, unfortunately, this kind of caromed away from him. Aggressive base running over there, let Martinez to be advanced to second. Yeah, it seemed like slightly rushed throw from Kennedy Thomas. You don't want to be lackadaisical and allow the base runner to take a big turn, but maybe a little too quick. And we'll see how Maloney approaches this at bat against Paris Lehman. Yeah, we know she's going to be slapping or bunning. They're putting on a play here down from Coach White, taking a look in on their wristband to see what they want to do here. Maloney just showed a hit away. I mean, she hasn't done that all weekend. Jasmine Rollins going to be checking her feet. Feet kind of tell the story about how she's going to approach that pitch. Brie Cantu's playing back a little bit. 
Jasmine's playing kind of right in the sweet spot where you would expect her to play for a slapper. Bunt hit foul on the first base side. A two and one the count on Maloney. Bella Dayton on deck and then the top of the order and Caden Henry. Chop toward shortstop. Esman has no throw to first. Infield single from Ashton Maloney moves Martinez to third. You teach slappers to do this. You practice doing this. Pound the ball into the ground, send it up toward the sky, and before it lands back down, you're already safe at first base. Nothing for Esman to do with that except for stick it in her pocket and give it back to Paris. Hope Trout wind out to talk with Paris Lehman. Kristen Vest season with Texas. Over 200 college softball games under her belt. And the Cougars are playing middle. They're not playing in, but they are playing a little tighter than they normally do. Looks like Esman is going to be covering second on a potential steal. Maloney, good speed at first. Five for six on the season when stealing bases. She's running. Fake of a throw from Coleman. She looks back Martinez, who had a small lead at third. That's part of the discussion that Coach Vesley was having with the infield is what are they going to do in this first and third situation? Is she going to straight steal, delay steal? And what's uh, Taria going to do with the ball? Now Kristen Vesley comes out. I think they're going to check to see if she left early. We saw it yesterday. Caden Henry left early after review. She was called out. And Coach Vesley challenging again, asking the umpires if Ashton Maloney left first base before the pitcher's throw. Yeah, they're going to go take a look at it, Matt. We've got a view here. It's certainly close. They've done a good job this weekend of trying to make sure they get the calls right. This, you know, being the very first Big 12 series in here in Houston, hosting the number one team in the nation. They've just spent that extra time to make sure they get it right. Again, the umpires this weekend, Mike Burwell is the home plate ump today. Tracy Laycock is at first. Terry Holt is the third base ump. A few scores from across the Big 12. Oklahoma beat Iowa State twice yesterday. As we look, I is she... her foot off before before the ball leaves the hand? This looks it very, is very close. Very close. Very close. Looks like it just leaves her hand, and she's. It's really hard to tell really when it's out of her tell. hand. Yeah. Very difficult to determine. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes you kind of have to look at what actually happens in real time. I think it looks pretty favorable to the Longhorns. The original call in the field stands, it is a steal. Six steals and seven tries this season for Ashton Maloney. An 0-2 count for Bella Dayton. Opens up a lot of possibilities for a squeeze play. But on 0-2, extra risky to try and lay down a bunt. Corners are up, middle infielders are halfway for Houston. Yeah, it looks like Esmond's coming over to cover the bag at third. So Jasmine Rollin can kind of crash here. One ball, two strikes. Caden Henry on deck for Texas. Protecting, fouled off towards the Texas bullpen. 
Nobody working in the Texas pen. Houston bullpen is empty as well. For the moment, it's Paris Lehman going for Houston and Mac Morgan for Texas. Yeah, I think Bella Dayton has seen the most pitches all weekend. I don't know what that number is, but it seems like she sees five or six or seven pitches every at bat. The time was called. I think Lamy wanted to be absolutely sure on the sign from Hope Trotwine in the first base dugout before this one two pitch to Dayton. Popped up into left center. Here comes Janaya Thomas. It's Kennedy Thomas with the catch. Her throw home is cut off. Sacrifice fly on two strikes from Bella Dayton. Yeah, she did her job at the plate, fouling the ball off, keeping herself alive, and is able to get that RBI for the Longhorns. She's able to make enough contact and lift it out. Allow a good tag up, and Martinez is safe. And now the air on the center fielder, Kennedy Thomas, to start the inning proves crucial as Martinez had the single to center but took the extra base on the low throw that Esman could not handle. Yeah, we chatted about what was the difference in the game, the first game when Houston beat Texas. And it was the errors. Texas, Defense in that fourth inning. Yeah, Texas made some errors. There were a couple hit by pitch in that game. And right now, when you check the scoreboard, we see that you know the Cougs have two errors, which has really affected this inning. Caden Henry's two for two, a single her first time, a bloop double right behind the third base bag, her last. Shows bunt, takes a ball. Now both errors today on Houston outfielders. You had Amanda Cardin bobble, a single in right field, and then just an uncharacteristic throw from Kennedy Thomas. Short hopping Amanda Cardin, or uh, Mandy Esman, excuse me. And heads up base running as Viviana Martinez took second as the ball bounced away from the shortstop. Yeah, and the, the game is slowing down just a little bit right now for Paris Lehman. She's taking a little bit more time between pitches, making sure that she gets the right call. But it also changes the pace of the game for the defense. I think working faster helps the defense stay a little bit more sharp. Two and one the count. And the dirt well blocked by Coleman, three and one. On Henry, doesn't get any easier after Henry. Scott to follow, Katie Stewart behind her. Yeah, it's just as you look down this lineup, it's just dangerous, more dangerous, and even more dangerous hitter that comes up for the Longhorns. Late Ooh. swing there from Henry, nearly hits the on-deck hitter Mia Scott, <laughs> who is smiling as she somehow avoided that. She was diving out of the way for, for her life. Brushed right across the front of her jersey. Extremely late swing there from Henry. She swung as if there were two strikes on her. This swing comes on a 3-1 pitch. Yeah, she was a little late on that. <laughs> Glad everybody's okay, but does make some for, for some entertainment for the Longhorns. Bounce to the right side. Cardin does well with a tough hop and takes it to the bag to end the inning. Yeah, they got out of that inning. They got lucky. They only scored one because of the errors that were made. We'll see. Regional last May, a run rule victory as Texas had a combined no hitter against Shelby Smith and her Seton Hall teammates. Morgan. Through the first four innings of that, no hits, one walk for her 17th when Estelle Check closed it out. And now they meet again. Yeah, they had a good battle, and I'm really anxious to see how she's going to handle this drop ball. Well, the drop ball was working last year against Seton Hall. Mac Morgan faced 12 batters. She coaxed 12 or 10 ground balls among those 12 batters. There's another ground ball. Alyssa Washington over to first. Smith is retired. Yeah, and this is exactly what you expect having a down ball pitcher. You're going to make your defense work. You know, anytime there's a, there's a down ball pitcher that's throwing, most of your outs are going to be something that is hit in the infield, probably hard. Very little elevated uh, balls that travel to the outfield 
when you're mostly throwing down. Janiah Thomas takes a strike. Smith walked her first time, is now 0 for 1. Janiah Thomas facing Estelle Check. Had a runner on third. First pitch she saw from Check lifted it out to left for a sacrifice fly. Janiah had kind of a cool experience today. She was actually the catcher for Willie Fritz when he threw out the first pitch. I thought that was pretty cool, considering that she committed to play here in Houston when she was a verbal commitment when she was 12. Bounce foul. A busy weekend for Coach Fritz and the entire athletic department. Baseball going for a sweep against Baylor today. And basketball, a 30-point win over Kansas on senior day. For Jamal Shedd, Juwan Roberts, and LJ Cryer. Outright regular season title for Houston men's basketball. And now softball looking for a series win over Texas. Squid towards third. They can hit the bag. It's a fair ball from Janaya Thomas. That was an unusual play. Mia Scott looking towards her dugout. This was hard to judge. When did it go foul? Did it go foul before third? And they're going to call Janaya Thomas back. Yeah, it, it didn't go past the bag. I mean, that's why Mia really didn't make an aggressive play on it. It was a foul ball. It was on the other side of the chalk line, or the, the paint line here in Houston. No argument from Coach Vesley, who's standing over there, or the Houston dugout. It's a 1-2 count here on Janaya Thomas. 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, Janaya doing everything that she needs to do on her end, just in case it is fair. You're hustling down to first base. Shelby Smith now getting loose in the Houston bullpen. Thomas bounces it right side. Alyssa Washington over to first. Easy does it for the second baseman of Texas, Alyssa Washington. Yeah, the captain makes, it, makes every play over in that area. You can just kind of expect to be out if you hit it to second base with the captain hanging out there at second. Back-to-back -back ground balls to Washington. Now it's Mandy Esman. She had the misfortune of a double play on the very next pitch after she thought she was hit by a pitch against Estelle Check. She tried to take first, was immediately called back by Mike Burwell, the home plate umpire. Houston challenged the ruling after a video review. The call stood. They're really just working her on the inner half of the plate whether it be when Kavan was throwing yesterday or whether it be Morgan or Estelle, they're working uh, Esmond really on that inner half. That one hits the inner half for a strike down in the Texas bullpen. Sophia Simpson is getting loose. Electric stuff from Simpson. We saw it on Friday night. Three strikeouts in two and two thirds innings. Chopped back to the mound. Nice play from Morgan, backpedaling to make the play, and the side is retired. Yeah, she's happy to get out of there and just throws an absolute bullet over there to Stewart to get the third out. Herrera, Louisiana native. Uh, pitched on last year's team after transferring from LSU. And with Houston thin in the pitching department after injury to Nicole Badeau, she comes on here in the fifth inning against Mia Scott. First pitch over the outside. And this is going to be a new look for Texas. They haven't seen her. They don't have a lot of information on her with analytics as well. So just one of those kind of go out, relax at the plate, let your hands work. Hit the ball where you see it. Scott bunting and fouls it back. Two, three, and four for the Longhorns here in the fifth inning. Uh, 55 innings, 64 hits allowed by Taylor Edwards last season. 34 strikeouts against 33 walks. Yeah, she looks like she's got a little upspin, trying to stay out over the outer half of the plate, getting comfortable out in the circle. She's way ahead in the count to Scott. One ball, two strikes. Close, but called the ball, two and two. That was borderline. You know, really, 
just says a lot about Mia Scott's ability to, to track the ball and her vision at the plate. And it was very close. Good, uh, good job by framing with uh, Taria Coleman. And now the count is full. Yeah, she's thrown up. She's thrown a little bit down, working in and out of the plate, trying to settle in here in her first inning, just five pitches deep for her in this game. The one and two to three and two for Mia Scott with Katie Stewart waiting on deck. Line drive out to right center. Bounces against the wall. Cardin will throw to second, and now Texas respecting Cardin's right arm after she threw out Jolie Mitchell earlier today. Yeah, and Mia Sk Scott gets all of this pitch. I thought it was going to sneak over the outfield wall there for a second, but Mia was able to uh, make sure she stays safe at first with Amanda's arm out there in right field. Scott with her second hit today, plus a walk. She really wreaked havoc with her legs last time on the bases. She stole second. She bluffs a steal here as Stewart takes strike one. Then she made it to third in a critical spot in this game. It was a comebacker off the bat of Reese Atwood to Paris Lehman. She glanced Scott back to third and then threw to first. And then Scott broke for home and scored ahead of the tag of Taria Coleman. Excellent base running for Mia Scott. And that's the difference in this game. You know, in the last at bat, when Katie Stewart was at the plate, they took a little time out on the sideline with Coach White and, and Coach Singleton and just kind of chatted with her about just relaxing. Coach White looked at Katie just a moment ago and kind of put his hands up. He's like, hey, you do your thing up there. Line drive into left. Played on a hop by Janaya Thomas. Loud contact for Katie Stewart for her first hit today. Yeah, this, this pitch was absolutely smoked to the outfield. And fortunately, Janiah was able to kind of get her ball, or her body out in front of the ball to keep it from tracking out to the wall. Here's Reese Atwood. Two on, nobody out. Out in front, pops it up behind third. Into the stands. It's really the first pitch that Reese has had over the middle part of the plate in, which is really her hot zone, something that she can really put the barrel on the ball with. She accidentally spit her gum out over on the side there, Matt, and made herself laugh a little bit. But if she gets another pitch like that, I wouldn't be surprised to see it travel out of the ballpark. Owen won the count on Atwood. He's off that time. Atwood was at the plate. Mia Scott was on third. She hit it back to Paris Lehman. Lehman a quick look to third and then threw it to first. Scott scored from third, exemplifying her high softball IQ. Now a timeout called. She wants to review the signs and get a new piece of gum. Yeah, she's got to have her gum in order to hit. I mean, we've, we've clearly learned that because she was giggling that, it, that she lost it out over here in the dirt. And if you look at the dirt, it's just sitting right there. So that must be part of her routine. She's got to have some gum in her mouth. Some players like mouthpieces. Clearly, this is what works for her. And that gets away. Wild pitch from Edwards. Scott to third. Stewart up to second. Who brought her that gum, but Steven Singleton, her hitting coach. Absolutely. That must be part of their deal. Every, every, yeah, everybody's got kind of their thing. You know, softball and baseball players are really superstitious. You could ask every single player on this field, some of us up here in the stands too, we all have these little superstitions. Hit hard to third, Rollin. A low throw dug by Cantu, and that was a longer look at third. Kind of a stare down there with Mia Scott after her great break for home last inning. And I think as part of that, in Rollins' head, forced the low throw, but a nice play at first by Cantu. This is the right way to make this play to make sure that Mia doesn't, you know, head to home on this one. 
And and if you look at, I mean, Mia wasn't even thinking about doing it. She's just kind of doing her normal little uh, moving back and forth of the plate. But a great play over there by the senior Brecan too. Jolie Mitchell now a two in scoring position. I also think with no outs, it's different than one out. You're expecting Mitchell to get an RBI, so maybe less aggressive there than on the previous comebacker two innings ago off the bat of Atwood. Right, right, and I it actually just crossed my mind, you know, if, as hard as Jolie's been hitting the ball, wouldn't it be such a surprise if they just lay down a little squeeze here with Scott at third base? That's a called strike. Jolie really didn't like that call much. She kind of had a little eye roll up at the plate, but really, you know, you just bear down. Coach White talked about that she's not conventional at the plate. She kind of just makes things happen. She doesn't have the most beautiful swing, but she changes the game when she uses her bat. High fly ball to left, way back, and gone. Another home run from Jolie Mitchell. A three-run shot makes it 6-2 Texas. She got all of this pitch again. It definitely was not a squeeze. And when it left the bat, Matt, I thought it was going to hit the video board again. But, you know, I said this earlier on, on Friday. I mean, she's just really seeing the ball in HD. She's seeing it maybe in 4K. Really drove the ball, made a big change for the scoreboard. Fortunately, it didn't change the face of the scoreboard this time, just changed the number in the box. Oh, she got revenge. You mentioned she didn't like the call a few pitches prior. Second homer of the weekend. Fourth on the season for Jolie Mitchell. And now it's Alyssa Washington. Line drive to short, nice play. Full extension there from Andy Esmond. Yeah, that's a great snag out there at short. That's Brooke Lorenzo who has come on to play defense to yeah. begin this inning. Great play by Brooke. And she hits this very hard. The captain, just Brooke just snags it right out of the air. At this level, that's a routine play for these great defenders. Martinez takes off speed for a strike. The home run from Jolie Mitchell, the seventh of the weekend for Texas, three on Friday, three yesterday, and Mitchell a crooked number here in the fifth on that three-run shot. I pop up, shallow left, Janaya Thomas comes on, and the inning is over, but not before a three for this inning. Amanda Carden will get things going for the Cougars. Nine, one, and two in the order. It's Mac Morgan. And Amanda's thinking about trying to sneak herself on with a little bunt there as well. But, you know, the, the, the Cougars have a chance. I mean, they've got, if you look at their lineup, the starting lineup, eight of the nine starters have a home run already this season. Back towards the circle. Morgan to first, but they'll have to elevate, Shay. That's been the problem against Mac Morgan. This drop ball pitcher is just induced ground ball after ground out among these Houston batters. Right. Totally agree. I mean, and that's what her job is to do. And that's the expectation when she comes into the game is let the defense work. And she's got that game face in. She wants to lock this down, take it all the way through the seventh as Lair Boutte steps in and takes the strike. Mac Morgan, two innings, no hits, one walk. Very efficient. 26 pitches needed to record six outs. Late swing by Boutte. Fouled off 0-2. I was watching Mia Scott down there at third base, kind of looking in when Lair was kind of acting like she was going to lay something down, and she didn't seem to be too bothered by it, knowing that Lair's up there to swing away. Chop towards second, Alyssa Washington knocks it down, infield hit for Lair Boutte. Yeah, that's one of those balls that, you know, they just spend so much time up in the air, it's difficult to make the play on that, even by the captain out there at second. All seven batters to face Mac Morgan have hit a ground ball. The first six were retired, now an infield hit. Here's Kennedy Thomas, and she takes strike one. 
You know, Kennedy's been kind of quiet so far this game. I mean, she's got herself on base, but one of the things Coach Vesley talked about her is she's just so calm. Very, very calm at the plate, very calm presence in the outfield. Chop foul. 0 oh, 2 on Kennedy Thomas. Thomas singled to center field her last time. That was going after the first pitch. Grounded out her first trip. Boutet, good speed at first. Houston with four hits yesterday, five hits today. And that movement is just running in on the hands of these left handed batters for Houston. Yeah, I noticed the, you know, she has that typical split grip, but. I noticed today she's not wearing batting gloves. She's wearing batting gloves yesterday. It could have been that it was about 20 degrees cooler, but uh, you know maybe she just wanted to get a little different feel in her hands. That run is really tough on these left-handed batters. Back-to-back -back pitches, Shay, that have run down the barrel of the bat of Kennedy Thomas. Yeah, just getting really, really in on her hands. It's hard to get extension when it's that tight in on your hands. And if it's dropping and a hard drop, it's really hard to push it through. Goes outside and misses. Well, if Houston wants to stage a comeback, this might be its best opportunity. We're in the fifth. Number two hitter at the plate, Jasmine Rollin on deck, down by four. And there's a line drive into right field to base hit. The throw to second, not in time. Close play at second. Strong throw from Maloney to the shortstop Martinez. Boutte had to make sure this fell in right field. Yeah, she's doing what she needs to do, and it's a bang-bang play at second base. And there's Martinez acting like the first baseman over there at second base to receive that throw from Maloney in right field. Thomas with her second hit today. Two on for Jasmine Rollin. And that's a hopeful sign for Houston. First ball elevated against Mac Morgan. Right, and she was trying to kind of fight it off and finally was able to get her barrel down on the bottom part, bottom half of the ball in order to drive it enough to get it out onto the green. That one run down the handle the bat as well. Two hits for Thomas today. Kennedy Thomas, 33 hits in 24 games this season. Jasmine Rowland, two homers on Friday. In a big spot in this game. That just missed. A long look there from the home plate up. Mike Burwell called the ball. Yeah, it was just off the plate, but a really good location. Trying to get Jasmine to, you know, her really her power zone is something, you know, middle in. So she's trying to sneak one by her there on the outer half of the plate. Brie Cantu on deck. Smash to short to second for one, the relay. In time, a double play, Martinez to Washington. Across to Stewart, and that ends the fifth inning. And Jasmine Rollins absolutely smashes this ball, and they just rolled it over like a routine double play. Houston considering challenging this call. Lair Boutet is standing on third base. The umpires will walk down and look at the monitor. Yeah, they're going to just make sure they've got the call right here. Really, really close call. We may have to slow that down in order to be able to see, even from all the camera views that we have up in the booth. Really hit well. Tough for Houston, back-to-back -back swings with good exit velocity. You had Kennedy Thomas, a line drive single, and then this swing, as we see, a play at first. It has to be in the back of the mitt. I think she's safe. Really, really close. Even in super slow motion, I see yellow. Right. Toes, yeah, on, toes the on the bag. You know, Hope Trotwine, she's over there right next to him. She called it safe as well. She's seen a lot of ball in her days. So I might lean with what Coach Hope was thinking. She might actually snuck in there. 
conversation there for our Boutte with Mia Scott. Did you talk much when you were a base runner with the uh, opposing infielders? You know, we didn't have this opportunity to check plays. So having this time to chat, really didn't, that didn't really occur. Not when I was a base runner, but sometimes if I was in the field and there was somebody at second base, I'd go over and chat with them a little bit. But not a lot of breaks in the game back in the days that I played, like we were seeing here. Yeah, the call is confirmed. A double play out at first base. Really close play. Glad they took the time. Once again today, all three games sell, sold out. And Ashton Maloney will get things going for Texas. She singled in the fourth, one for two today. And the bottom of the order has done its job today, Shea, for Texas. Martinez, Maloney, Bella Dayton getting on base. Setting the table for the top of the order. Yeah, they've all been difficult outs. Actually, one through nine have been difficult outs. You got the sacrifice fly from Bella Dayton in the fourth inning. Martinez and Maloney both singling in the fourth. Giving RBI opportunities for the likes of Henry Scott and Stewart. Line foul. Closest to it, Janiah Thomas near the empty Texas bullpen. And again, the long ball continues to be the difference for Texas. Houston's done a pretty good job pitching today with a three-run homer for Jolie Mitchell. Turned a 3-2 lead into a 6-2 lead for Texas. Yeah, I feel like we've said her name a lot this weekend. She's really impacted the game with her bat multiple, multiple times. Great pickup from Notre Dame. Yeah, eight starters back from last year's team for Texas. And you add Jolie Mitchell as a bat. You add Tegan Kavon as potential ace of the staff. And Katie it's why Stewart. they're number one in the country. Yeah, Katie Stewart, I mean, you can just go right down the line. Great, great knock there by Maloney. And Maloney with an opposite field single. Yeah, that's not counting the freshman. As you mentioned, Katie Stewart, Katie Henry as well. This is a perfect slap, getting some elevation. I thought that Lorenzo was going to be able to snag it out of the air, but Maloney is safe over at first base. Victoria Hunter now to pinch hit. One for one this weekend as a pinch hitter. And this is a coming home for her as well. She is from Houston. And that gets away from Taria Coleman. Big turn at second. And Coleman looks back Ashton Maloney. Hunter St. Pius the 10th high school on the north side of Houston. Right near Shepard and 610 North. Foul back, big cut there from Victoria Hunter. Right, and she had a couple of really good cuts in her at bat yesterday uh, that we enjoyed watching. I mean, she, when she swings, there's no doubt about whether she's trying to make contact or not. She bats here in the place of Bella Dayton. Hit foul past Coach White. One ball, two strikes. She's a way ahead in the count, so she'll just want to kind of see if she can get Hunter to chase something here. Good block from Taria Coleman, two and two. Yeah, I was concerned about that a little bit if she was trying to be off the plate. You know, Taria has been hanging out behind the plate all weekend, and Coach Vesley talked about how important that it was for her to stay fit, stay loose, where she can play short sometimes, and she can also be behind the dish. 
Fouled off on the check swing by Hunter. It remains two and two. Outfield shaded towards left. A gap in right center for Victoria Hunter. She goes into straightaway left field. Anaya Thomas, strong throw cut off by Rollin. Another pinch hit for Hunter, who's two for two off the bench this weekend. Yeah, and she smokes this ball kind of right through the 5-6 hole, gets all of this pitch. With it being a 2-2 count, she was really still planning on swinging very hard. It looks like they're going to put Bella back in to run for Hunter. Bottom of the order remains productive. Maloney has two hits. The nine hole gets a hit there off the pinch hitter, Hunter. Now it's Caden Henry. Lefty on lefty here. Pulled foul with Bella Dayton running on the pitch. Now that might have been a little hit and run action that Coach White called there. The Cougars were playing middle, kind of halfway earlier when when uh, Hunter was at the plate. Lair Boutte was actually playing on the grass. And now she's way in, well in on the infield. Bounce to the right side and hits the base runner. She will be out. Bella Dayton, a mistake there. And going back to third will be Maloney. That's the first out. Yeah, this is one of those complicated. I mean, Bella was going on contact, it looked like to me. You really have to take a peek in and see where the ball ends up running, especially when you've got, you know, Henry who can pull the ball all around the ballpark. Oh, it looked like she actually did see it, but couldn't get out of the way in time. Mia Scott. That takes the strike over the outside. Scott singles in each of her last two appearances, plus a walk. Great base running as well. Again, she came home in a 2-2 game to give Texas the lead on a comebacker to Paris Lehman. Throw down to second from Taria Coleman. It's a steal of second for Caden Henry. Interesting, because Maloney didn't even trickle off a of third base at all. Yeah, really good speed at third. So that might have been a straight steal there from Henry. The green light to go with her speed. And now a two RBI opportunity for Mia Scott. High pop up. Lair Boutte looking into the sun, makes the catch and there's two down. Yeah, a great pitch there by Shelby Smith to be able to get her to pop up. You know, Mia Scott has been a difficult out all weekend for the Cougar pitching staff as a great pitch to get her to pop it up over to Lair at second. Now Katie Stewart with another RBI opportunity. A single her last time, one for three today, her first start of the weekend. Well, she didn't like that call too much. She felt like that might have been a little bit too far in off of the plate. And you can see here it traveled in. You know, it's difficult to see from our angle and even from that angle as well, but it did look like Coleman had to remove quite a bit toward the inner half of the plate to catch that ball. One ball, one strike. Houston has Cantu, Coleman, and Smith. Four, five, and six do up in the bottom of the sixth. Texas trying to score for the fourth straight inning. Fouled off the front leg of Katie Stewart. Yeah, another little courtesy sweep there that we'll have to see umpires do to give the student athlete a little more time to shake off stuff like that. So that's just a really nice part of the gentleman and gentlewoman part of this game. One and two the count. Smith trying to strand two here in the sixth. And she does, she gets Stewart to chase. Yeah, she went upstairs on her, 
When the ball rises, it makes your eyes rise. It's really hard to hit. We'll step in. She is from League City. And the first pitch, she sprays it foul behind first. Yeah, the League City youth softball program had 300 tickets available for their players and their family. They were able to come out and enjoy this game today. Morgan saw her first adversity last inning, a soft single to right from Kennedy Thomas. Cantu takes it, and then with two base runners on, hard ground ball off the bat of Jasmine Rollin, but a really nice play from Viviana Martinez on the short hop to second, and a close call at first. After review, double play was confirmed. Another line drive Ooh. foul, that hit the bare hand. I think Paige Holsey's dad right there knocked it to a young fan who has the foul ball. Yeah, that is Paige's dad, and he actually, that move that he made actually saved a couple of kids that are standing behind him. He didn't quite flinch, he's just locked in on the game. Cantu has had an excellent eye this weekend, continues to get on base. Doubled down the right field line in the second. She walked in the third. Watches that miss. She has drawn four walks this weekend. On base percentage over 500 for the year. And she's drawn another. Really good at bat by Bree there. They've been throwing her away really all weekend. She saw two on the inner half of the plate and actually laid off because she's made them. Texas has made her kind of force her to look away, kind of middle away. And really good at bat by Bree. Looks like a pinch runner coming for Bree Cantu here. She's been on base three times, a double and two walks. Oftentimes we see Jordy Wilkins in these situations. No pinch runner, it appears. Just a conversation between Coach Vesley and Mike Burwell, the home plate umpire. Taria Coleman singled in the second, hit into a fielder's choice her last time. Showing butt and takes the ball. Texas, six runs, 11 hits, no errors, six left on. Houston, two runs, six hits, and two errors with four left on the bases. Yeah, Close pitch called the ball. Yeah, she's really being careful with Coleman right now. I mean, she's really just trying to be almost too careful around the plate. With a four run lead, you can be a little bit more aggressive in the circle and let your defense work. And that's called a strike over the inner half. And Taria knows the zone. I mean, she's been hanging out behind the plate all day today, so. Up and in, 3-1. Tegan Kavon is back and working in the Texas bullpen. And Coleman draws a walk. Back-to-back -back walks issued by back Morgan. Yeah, and she was just off of the plate. Great eye by Taria Coleman. And a really good at bat for her as well. She's got Will, so. One of those times of the game where drama's building a little bit. Coach Vesley's making some moves with her players. And now Mike White's gonna take a walk and chat with his defense. Jordy Wilkins, the pinch runner out at second. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier, and the move is now made. A pitcher that doesn't walk many. She had walked three this season. Make that two this season before today. Three walks this afternoon, including the back, the last two hitters. And a bit unusual, as you said. You have to fear the hitters and respect the hitters, but you're pitching with the four-run lead. It's surprising to see her miss with those offerings. Yeah, she's just trying to be a little bit too fine. But this is a key part of the game here. I mean, the, the, everybody that's available to talk to one of the student athletes seems to be out on the field doing that, both with 
the Cougar side of it and the Longhorn side of it. She'll face Shelby Smith. It's a repeat of the regional last year. That was the first no hitter in postseason history for Texas softball, Texas against Seton Hall. Line drive to right, it's a base hit. Jordy Wilkins, the pinch runner, is waved in. The throw gets away from home. Here comes Taria Coleman. Two score on the single from Smith, and it's a 6-4 game. You know, Shelby's doing her thing out there at second base, but really she just is trying to put the ball out on the green, look the other way with it, and really put pressure on the defense. Jordy comes in here sliding, ball gets away from Atwood, trickles away for her, and then Taria is able to cruise in and score two. Katie Reppa is gonna pinch run here. Smith continues to go to the opposite fields. Picks up her 15th RBI of the season. And a pitcher who is in total control. Again, the first seven batters that faced Mac Morgan all hit a ground ball. Lair Boutte had the first infield hit on the seventh. But beginning with Kennedy Thomas, Houston started to elevate a little bit. Yeah, just line drive instead of, you know, pounding it into the dirt, which is what you really want to try to do as an offense is to get that, that hard down ball elevated a little bit, kind of spray it over. And they've been able to do that. Here's Janiah Thomas, sacrifice fly, her first at bat. Up the middle, backhand play, throw, not in time. Infield hit from Janiah Thomas. Alyssa Washington tried the backhand and had a slight bobble. Yeah, this is a difficult play to make. It's hit pretty sharply. And I think even if she makes that pl uh, clean catch, it, she might have been able to get her out, but Janiah's got wheels down there makes herself safe at first base. Another circle visit. Uh, Mandy Esman will re-enter and bat for Brooke Lorenzo here. Andy Esman is the potential go-ahead run. Thomas the tying run at first. A chop foul on the third base side. I like how aggressive she just was, you know, trying to keep the momentum for her team. Maybe a little out of that zone that Coach Vesley wants her to stay in, but I like how aggressive she just was and went after this pitch to try to keep everything moving forward. The Longhorns are playing in. Aspen takes outside. Kavon was getting loose. We saw Simpson, and this is a moment they're letting one of their aces from last season go, Mac Morgan. And Coach White said it's a challenge. She needs reps. She needs innings. And a chop foul. And this is a moment where she's being allowed to get those innings in a clutch spot. It's different when it's a, a blowout. This is a clutch moment. Her team leading by two. The game on the line here in the sixth. Yeah, Coach Vesley just kind of motioned to Essman, just kind of let your hands go. Just relax. Let your hands go. She She's protects really, there. Really battling at the plate. We've seen that pitch primarily early in counts. Run in on the hands of the left-handed batters. And sometimes she'll go back to the outer part of the plate. We'll see what Morgan does here on one and two. They go away, and Espen protects it. And Vesley uses her left foot. A two-sport athlete at Oklahoma soccer and softball. Yeah, I was like, ooh, that might get her a little bit on the inside of the ankle, but she's still got... It tells you how important this game is to both of these teams. I'm expecting for Tegan to be able to pitch against LSU day after tomorrow when they travel to Baton Rouge. But they need to win this game right now. And they go to their freshman out of Iowa. One ball, two strikes. Into left center, hit well. And it's down for extra bases. The throw is cut off. 
Katie Repa scores on a one-two pitch. The first pitch from Tegan Kavon. It's an RBI double for Mandy Esmond. A really good job by Coach Vesley here, going back to Esmond, knowing that she can drive the ball and scores two. Uh, she scores one, it's six to five. It's a three run six inning, still nobody out. And now Michaela Nita gets her first at bat of the weekend. She was the starting left fielder until Janiah Thomas came back. And Nita has been really good from the left side. She loves to hit to left fields. And the pitch hitter steps in and she hits it to first. A nice play there from Stewart. She tags out Nietzsche, staring back at third to make sure Janiah Thomas doesn't run home. Yeah, solid work over there by Stewart and the first baseman that are watching this game today. That's the way that you play this ball. A lot of speed over there. Just hold yourself, make sure that you keep the ball secure and get the out. Here's Lair Boutte. Boutte takes a strike. Lair Boutte yesterday against Kavon, one for four with two strikeouts. Already hit a shot today, home run and singled. Big cut from Ooh. Boutte, 0 and 2. Ooh. I felt that up here. She wanted that pitch. She really just got underneath that pitch, but she was thinking yard on that one. Excuse me, swing to short, the throw comes home. And Janiah Thomas tagged out. She tried to get into a rundown. Reese Atwood applies the tag. A good throw from Viviana Martinez to get Janiah Thomas. The way this played out, it almost looked like Janiah was going on the, on the swing. She's got to make sure that that ball gets through the infield before she advances to home. Here's Kennedy Thomas. Into right center, it is down. Here comes Esmond, the throw to third. Safe at third, Kennedy Thomas. A clutch hit for Kennedy Thomas, and we're tied at six. Talk about momentum change. How important it was earlier in this inning. She just smokes the ball and then shows off her wheels. Scores another one, and then Lair Boutte is safe over at third base. Got a lot of uniforms dirty on that at bat. Three hits today for Kennedy Thomas. It's a four run sixth. Houston's come all the way back from a 6-2 deficit to tie the game, but now looking to take the lead with Jasmine Rollins stepping to the plate. Jasmine had some opportunities yesterday against Tegan Cravan. Didn't really get the bat on the ball very well, but what you have to remember is she learned something from every at bat yesterday that she'd like to try to put into play here. Texas does have two outs. The umpires are looking at their scorebooks, double checking a few things here. Mike Burwell, home plate umpire, Tracy Laycock at first base, Terry Holt at third. It looks like Mia Scott and Lair Boutte get to visit again over at third base. Now Jasmine Rollin. One for four yesterday against Tegan Kavan. Gets to face her for a fifth time here in the clutch. Two outs, two in scoring position, tie game, six to six. Just doing a re-entry, they were confirming the lineup because there were so many pitch runners and then a, 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 I think for Brooke, Brooke Lorenzo and Esman. Rollin ready from the left side. First pitch swing and a really good cut. Really, really unloaded on that one. 
Rollin was just listening over with her left ear. Nadia, Coach Nadia Taylor is kind of chatting with her a little bit over there. Oof. Good off speed. And part of that checking of the lineup and the re-entry is who is on deck, Brie Cantu on deck. That might be the consideration with a open base at first before this at bat began. But now 0-2 on Jasmine Rollin. And she protects Good and fouls back. One thing I'm noticing here is, is Jasmine's taking a little bit more time between pitches. When we were watching Cravon throw yesterday. She's seven, eight seconds between pitches. She works quickly. Towards second base, Alyssa Washington makes the catch. And yeah, the inning is over, but Houston gets four here in the sixth. Really big inning. Houston was able to put the bat on the ball and get four runs. We go to the seventh. Maris Lehman started and finished that game. She returns here for the seventh inning after the offense scored four runs. Reese Atwood here against Paris Lehman. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, that's a good re-entry. She started, Smith came in, we saw a little Edwards, and then Paris back in there to close this out. Taylor Edwards pitched the sixth, allowed a three-run homer to Jolie Mitchell. That gave Texas a four-run lead. That went out in front of that. Again, Houston has pitched her quite well this weekend. She came in top four in the country, entering the weekend in homers, RBI, and slugging percentage. You know, it's key when you look at all the analytics that are available to teams and players and individuals and us. If you can execute your game plan, you can slow down a great hitter like this. And the Cougs have been able to do that this weekend so far with Reese. And the first confrontation, Lehman hit her in the calf in the third with the runner on third and Mia Scott. She coaxed a comebacker. Lehman looked at third and then threw to first and then Scott sprinted home for a 3-2 lead. Foul back, good swing there from Reese Atwood. Yeah, she just missed that pitch just underneath it. Notice she's got her gum going again. Got to get that same rhythm, that same, that same thing going. It's kind of like when you're at the, the line in basketball. You know, you've got your certain amount of dribbles, a certain amount of spins, so you kind of get your routine. Same thing with hitting. Two balls, two strikes. That soft pitch. Feels like a new wrinkle from Harris Lehman. There was yeah. a lot of east-west on Friday and earlier today. We're seeing more of the well, that north pitch south. Is, that's dangerous there, hanging that up there for Reese to take a look at. It's off speed, just kind of sitting right there for her to drive. Here comes the 3-2. Outside, Atwood on base to start the seventh. Seems like every time we turn around, it's Atwood and Mitchell. Atwood and Mitchell, and here she is again. She's been a difficult out all weekend. Mitchell, a three-run home run off Taylor Edwards. Last inning, Mike White out of the dugout. A pinch runner here for Texas. Leanne Good was the first baseman on Friday night. San Antonio native, went to San Andrea O'Connor High School. But Jolie Mitchell struck out looking against Paris Lehman in the first inning. And since that at bat, a single and the three run homer off Edwards two innings ago. Yeah, they're, they're putting on a call here. I don't know if it, thinking maybe a bunt situation with no outs to move the runner around, maybe play old school small ball. We'll see what, what happens. It's a good bunt. Coleman picks it up. She throws to Boutte covering first, and Boutte handles a high throw. And on the play, 
Leanne Good advances to second. Yeah, that's a difficult call. I mean, you've got a player in Mitchell who has just absolutely destroyed the softball this weekend, asked to lay down a bunt, and she executes it. That's how important small game, the small ball is to softball, move the runner over in scoring position. There's the captain, Alyssa Washington. Inside for a ball. They've pitched her well today. She's 0 for 3. A ground out in the first. Since then, a pop out and a line out. Paris Lehman. She's worked a lot of the innings this weekend as Houston tries for a series win over Texas. Off speed lifted to right center. Long run for Cardin. She splits the outfielders. The throw to second. Not in time, Texas regains the lead on an opposite field double from Alyssa Washington as Leanne Good comes in to score from second. Really, really great adjustment that she makes within that swing to drive the ball to the up opposite side of the field. And good job by putting Leanne Good in here with her wheels to score from second base. And let's remember this happened because Jolie Mitchell was able to lay down the bunt and get that runner into scoring position and they've basically just switched places with each other. Eviana Martinez. Wild pitch gets past Taria Coleman. Washington holds a third. May have hit the umpire. Now Mike White will talk with the third base on Terry Holtz. And now Hope Troutwine's going to call time and go out to the circle. Potential squeeze situation here with Viviana Martinez at the plate and Alyssa Washington standing on third. Maybe she, you know, being a left-handed hitter, both on the horn side and the kook side. Alyssa Washington at third. 1-0 count for Viviana Martinez. Inside for a ball, 2-0. Ashton Maloney on deck. The defense is playing halfway with one out to protect that run. Just missed high, three balls, no strikes. I think considering the situation here, there's Unlikely going to be a green light 3-0 here. She's probably going to be taking all the way. And you wonder about just the mental strain for Paris Lehman. Friday to today, all these clutch moments, stressful situations, thinking about every pitch. And at the end of a long weekend, it has to wear you down a bit. Well, I think this is what you should expect as a D1 player. You get out there in the circle, you control the game. I mean, if you, you've got the ball in your hand every pitch, that's part of playing at this level. Ashton Maloney will be lifted here for a pinch hitter. Harris Lehman chatting with Bree Cantu, our first baseman. Mike White talked about if there was a situation where he needed someone to be able to hit away and stand in and hit away for Maloney because she's only slaps. He's going to go to the athlete that's from Humble, just north of town here, played at Atascacita High School. Katie Simmons will pinch hit here. Two for four with an RBI and a run scored, playing first base yesterday in her lone start of the weekend. Timmits hits for Maloney. 10 hits and 24 at bats this season, hitting 417. Washington on third, Martinez standing at first. One down in the seventh. Outside. Well, first and third situation here. 
Rollin is playing back. Bree Cantu is playing back. But the middle infield is playing halfway. Line drive to right. Carden makes the catch. Washington tags from third and scores. Texas has scored twice here in the seventh. Good swing there from Simmons to the opposite field. Yeah, she, she answered that call that, you know, Mike Wyatt gave her this opportunity and she was able to drive the ball far enough to score the captain from third base tagging up. Now Bella Dayton. Sacrifice fly her last time has also popped up. Well, we know she's going to look at at least five or six or seven or eight pitches in this at bat and probably foul off three or four of them. She really has a really great talent to help protect the plate. For Houston in the bottom of the seventh, Brie Cantu, Taria Coleman, Katie Repa do up four, five, and six in the order. But Houston did have chances there in the sixth to take the lead. Could not break through against Tegan Kavon. Yeah, that was a close pitch. I think. The Houston side really wanted that, but way ahead in the count, 3-0. She'll be taking all the way here. And she finds the bottom part of the strike zone, 3-1. Yeah, for Bella, she's going to be wanting to look for her favorite pitch, something that she could drive. The way they've been throwing her is a little bit away, so middle away. I maybe change my vision, maybe kind of look away and let my hands go. Here's the 3 1. And a walk. Dayton bluffed to bunt. Lehman issues the free pass. Two on, two down for Caden Henry atop the Texas order. Yeah, still talking about educating these student athletes, thinking about their at bat, how they can make themselves better, even in their next at bat with Coach Zaleski over, our, over there at uh, first base box. Fifth trip to the plate today. Caden Henry is two for four. Hits it to third. Rollin will step on. Set of the tag. She'll. Swipe the tag instead of stepping on third. The inning is over, but Texas sis. Come on, complete game for the ninth win yesterday of her freshman season. Now it's Cantu. She'll have to earn it here in the seventh inning facing Cantu and Taria Coleman in the number six position. Most likely Shelby Smith. Cantu swings and misses. She has walked twice and doubled. And Kavon, you know, she throws the ball in the 70s. That first pitch up, rise ball in the 70s. Really, really impressive. A really good eye all weekend from Cantu. Yesterday against Tigging Kavon, 0 for 1, but she walked twice. Now facing her for the fourth time this weekend. Fifth year senior against the freshman. Fouled it back. Yeah, she's, they're still kind of keeping the ball middle out. Looks like Bree's kind of doing a little self-talk. In these situations, especially when, you know, the kind of the game is on the line, they've got to get a couple of runs here to keep it going or maybe go ahead, but you really got to quiet yourself and just trust your hands. Cantu protects. It remains two and two. A four run sixth inning. Impressive resilience from the Cougars in the sixth. It all began with the leadoff walk drawn by Brie Cantu. She lays off here. 
There was Cantu and Coleman both walking against Mac Morgan, a pitcher that doesn't walk many batters. Shelby Smith with the opposite field single. And an error on the backhand by Alyssa Washington off the bat of Janiah Thomas. And Cantu mm. has walked again, just yeah. like the sixth, the seventh start to the walk to Cantu for the Cougars. You called it, Matt. They've been very careful with her, particularly today. And, uh, and, and actually, it was great at bat. She went up in the zone a little bit with her, but Bree's not biting. Now Taria Coleman, the potential tying run. Six walks drawn this weekend by Bree Cantu. And Coleman takes just a bit hot. The Texas infield, the middle infielders are playing halfway. Coleman drills that foul. You know, looking to, to roll that double play, I think that's kind of what they're planning for, but definitely not a bunning situation. The corners are both back. Coleman, five home runs this season. A line drive homer off Sid Lali Gutierrez in the first inning on Friday. And she watches that hit the inside. Yeah, that was that little off speed that she showed us a little bit uh, yesterday as well. Shelby Smith on deck. Houston down two in the seventh. Coleman behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. And she fouled it off. Yeah, they really battling. Coleman's a difficult out. She is surprisingly really great speed for a catcher. She grew up here in Houston, played at C.E. King, but her hands are so quiet. She's got to protect here. Bounces it to the right side. Washington goes to second for the force out. One down in the seventh as Shelby Smith comes to the play. That's a key play here, too, by Alyssa Washington. You really want to keep that runner off of second base. It's a little bit more of a risky play, but the confidence that those two middle infielders have with each other, they were able to make that out at second. Smith, an RBI single to right center. Her last time up. Foul tips it at home plate. Also a walk and a ground out for Shelby Smith this afternoon. And she should be confident. She had two hits in two at-bats, plus a walk against Tegan Kavon. Smith had two of Houston's four hits against Kavon yesterday. Yeah, she's seeing the ball well at the plate. And, you know, she's very disciplined up there. She's going to make Kavon bring the ball down, even though she's a power rise ball pitcher. Went down, hits it out to right field. Maloney, looking back into the sun, makes the catch. Smith flies out, two down in the seventh. Houston's last hope here in the seventh, Janiah Thomas. It's Thomas against Kavon. First pitch over the outside for a strike. Yeah, she's going right at her where there with some high velo. Thomas yesterday facing Kavon, 0 for 3 with the strikeout. Yeah, she's got a good opportunity here maybe to see some green and keep this game going. Called strike, looked to be maybe a bit high. And it's 0 and 2 on Janiah Thomas. Some groans from the Houston crowd. Tegan Kavon, one strike away from a series victory for Texas. That one missed high, one and two. Yeah, Janiah just kind of taking a moment over there, taking a deep breath and going to hunker down and get back in the box here. And give it a shot. 
Good take again from Janaya Thomas, two and two. Mandy Esman on deck if Thomas can reach. Two balls, two strikes, two down in the seventh. Strike three over the inside. Tegan Kavon comes on and closes out this Texas win. She gets her second win of the weekend and proves.